Welcome to episode four of Imagine, Capture, Inspire. And on this episode, I'm gonna give you six tips for photographing out of a plane or a helicopter. Stick around and I hope you enjoy the show. What's up everyone? Just here at Shark Bay Airport and we're going to go do some flights out of a Cessna so hopefully we get some nice contrast between the blue water, the red sands and get some photos for the new, for the website. Uh, it's a bit chilly, it's actually about 11 degrees uh, so we got the wind jacket, got a jumper on, hopefully it warms up a little bit but it might be a bit chilly up there. These guys seem pretty cool, I think James is my uh, my pilot so we're gonna probably have a chat to him soon gonna run us through have a bit of a plan on where we're going and what we're gonna do fingers crossed we get some good photos and uh yeah we'll catch you later Finally going for our scenic flight over Shark Bay. I've been wanting to do this for about, I don't know, probably about eight, eight to ten years. First time I saw a photograph of Shark Bay. It's from one of the uh, AIPP members. Pretty, pretty pumped and pretty excited to actually see this landscape um, from air for the first time. Seen lots and lots of photos of it. Um, so yeah, finally good to see it with my own eyes and hopefully get my own interpretation. Um, if you're not familiar with Shark Bay, basically it's a World Heritage listed site and yeah there's lots of red sands, I think that's my plane starting up, warming up now, lots of red sands meaning beautiful blue water, um, really abstract looking um, parts of the landscape that you know, different times of day the light changes and so does the landscape, um, it's also closest uh, well, it's almost the most western point of Australia. Um, there is, uh, I think it's Dirk Heart Dog Island, that's the westernmost point of Australia. Um, so we might fly over there, we're going to go over Useless Loop. We're going to meet my pilot James soon and hopefully um, come up with a bit of a plan, a bit of a strategy to get, get the photos that I want to capture. Um, also, important thing when shooting from the air is making sure your camera is always tethered so I've just got a couple of harnesses also got a wind jacket Fuck, it's bloody cold it is cold it's 11 degrees outside so we might um, turn this camera off and hopefully next time I chat to you it'll be with some epic photos that um, will go well with my collection so I'll catch you later And they're, they're really, they're quite, um, they're quite nice. Is that the camera Is that that one? No, it's this bit here. Yeah, that's the oh. station. Yeah, no. Actually, I've got a pro, I've got an app for that. Um, I'll just check that. Basically, I, I think, especially from yesterday, it always looked good when you know, either the sun was behind me or, you know, 45 degrees around. That's usually the, sh yeah. looks better. When I was shooting directly into it, it looked yeah. Bit blown out and yeah. stuff. So I think similar sort of thing. If we try to do any, um, I don't know what you call them, but sort of like. Going yeah, it'll be a way stuff. easier to do that today as well because there's less wind up there. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Because um, yeah, I, I think I guess we'd have to do that coming back this way. Or if yeah. It's there, so I'm like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I can do is like. Um, I can just consistently do some S turns. Instead of like doing one big loop, S turns might make it quicker. Oh yeah. yeah. So then like you have a couple, like maybe like 20 seconds where yeah. the sun's in the wrong spot, and yeah. then I flip it around and come back this way and you've got the shot. Yep. Yeah. And then hook it like that, and then back around again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of like flying all the way down and, and around, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll give that a go. And it might save um, time. That's all. Yeah. If I'm struggling, I might just say let's go back to. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. I'm trying to stop. Not so golden anymore. 
What do I mean by golden? Oh, uh, like the light turns a bit more um, amber. Yeah. Almost towards sunset. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like blue hours after sunset, usually about an hour. Yeah. Golden hours um, up an hour, or 30 minutes prior, 30 minutes after. Yeah. And then the rest is just daylight. And same thing with uh, in the mornings as well, blue hour and golden hour. Blue hour's an hour before. Then, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, you notice after the sun sets, you get all those like kind of lingering pinks and purples out here yeah. in the sky as well. Yeah. yeah, they look cool. Just photography wise, it's hard to, yeah. like, I've got to up my, like, especially when you fly, you've got to, like, up the ISO or drop the shutter speed to try to catch that light. Yeah. If you've got a tripod, it's easy, but flying is harder. Yeah. So, and plus, it, yeah, just the shape of the light. Yeah. Hopefully, we get something good. Cool. All right, well, I'll get the camera gear ready. Um, yeah. So as you've seen, tip number one is make sure you tether your cameras. So the reason why I do this is simply because we're flying with the doors off or out the window. Now you don't want to drop that camera and cause an accident if it went into the propellers. So make sure you take a tether or a strap or something to make sure it's secure. You don't want to rock up to the airport and they say, well you can't fly with the doors off or out the window unless you've got a tether. So make sure you take a tether or a strap. Second tip, as you've seen, uh, make sure you plan your flight. So talk to your uh, pilot, get a really great understanding of what you're wanting to shoot, where to go, and maybe he might have some pointers or she might have some pointers as well. So plan your flight as best as you can, which leads me to tip number three, making sure you use something like photo pills and really understand how the light's gonna hit the land. So in this photo, in this, these photos I actually shot um, twice from the air, one in the morning around 10 a.m. and one in the afternoon about an hour before sunset. So make sure you've got a bit of an understanding on how the light's going to hit your subject. And I use photo pills, so check out photo pills. It's a pretty good app. Um, there's heaps of tutorials out there on YouTube. Check that out. So tip number four, make sure you fly with the doors off or out the window. So the more room you've got, the better. Now in this one, I was shooting out of a Cessna through the window and there's still an opportunity there that the wing might be in the shot. So helicopters or some of the bigger Cessnas, you've got an opportunity for a bit more room to breathe, but if budget's on mine, you can do it from one of the smaller Cessnas. And the reason why I do this is simply to avoid any reflections from the glass um, or any dirt that might be on the glass. So doors off, that's a must. The problem with that is it is more expensive. Uh, to give you an example, helicopter on the Gold Coast is about $1,200 an hour. In America, it's about $1,900, or in Hawaii, it's about $1,900 US um, to do that. Uh, the Cessnas are a little bit cheaper. I think this was about $800 an hour to fly with um, through through the window and charter. So the point of chartering is to make sure you get to fly wherever you want. You can instruct the pilot and say, hey, let's do one more loop, let's do that again. Scenic flights actually fly along a uh, set route and you can't actually um, say, hey, can you turn back? I didn't quite get the shot. Or can you turn back? I want to go to 4,000 feet instead of 1,500 feet. So that's why chartering and it cost is a bit better. Tip number four, make sure if you're going to use a lens hood, make sure you use uh, either gaffer tape or something to just secure that to the lens. You don't want this to come loose when you're flying high and it ends up hitting the propeller. 
So if you are going to use this, which is good to protect the lens, uh, but it's not good if you are sticking outside the window or outside the door. What will happen is this has got an you know an extra 20 centimeters on it. What will happen is you're sticking outside the door and you might just go a little bit too far and all of a sudden you get this big gush of wind that really moves the camera and potentially uh, gives you a blurry image. So the other option would be to take the lens hood off and then put maybe a polarizer filter or UV filter on. So uh, in some of these shots, I actually used a polarizer filter to give me just a bit of a different look. The other thing is a lot of people already have a UV filter and this can help reduce any atmospheric distortion. So that can also be pretty good if you're worried about having two cameras on you bouncing around and damaging the front of your lens, which does happen. So that brings me in to the next tip, which is using two cameras as much as possible. So what I actually do is shoot with a 24 to 70. Don't know why I put it down over here. I shoot with a 24 to 70 on one camera, which gives me a good variety of wide angle versus um, you know something a little bit more zoomed, and then a 70 to 200. Now the reason why I do this is the 70 to 200, 70 to 200 helps me just pick out some of those finer details it helps me remove some of those, uh, the things that you might not want in your shot. Maybe there's a bush or something near there, or maybe there's um, a building or something that's not quite what you want in your shot. And instead of cropping in, you zoom in a little bit more, you get the shot. Not to mention 7200, if you're at 200 mil um, or more of a zoom lens, you're starting to bring those subjects closer and sort of compressing the image a little bit so you get a different look. So I'm usually shooting at 1,000th of a second to 4,000, okay, shutter speed. Now this changes and varies depending on several things. It can mean a higher shutter speed if I'm flying a little bit lower to the ground um, as the subjects are moving quicker or potentially I'm zoomed in even more. So you really need to adjust your camera settings based on how much you're zoomed in and how fast you're going. Okay, so anywhere between those two shutter speeds will help an aperture. Now, because you're usually flying quite high, uh, you can get away with sh um, shooting around f4 to f8. Um, now, the reason why you don't want to go to f16 is because you are moving quite quick and as soon as you're starting um, using those higher shutter speeds, you'll need to up your ISO if you end up shooting around f16. So don't be afraid to use something around f4 to give you, um, you know, that flexibility with your shutter speed and making sure that ISO isn't too high. So thanks for watching this episode. If you like watching these, uh, please subscribe, comment below with any questions you might have. I'm going to answer some of them in future episodes. And most importantly, give it a thumbs up if you can. And thanks for watching. You can find me at John Wright Photo on Instagram and Facebook, shoot through some questions, and I'll see you on episode five. This looks unreal. Hey, babe, check this out. Oh, wow. Just that man raised X Men. <laughs> Hopefully you're not like <laughs> laughing the whole time. <laughs>